All right, John is unboxing our Signature Series 1000 skimmer. We're gonna get that bad boy ready for its new permanent home. And it's gonna go right here. So we'll bring the machine over, dig that down, and we're gonna set that. So the way we set our skimmers are, so a skimmer is what dictates the entire water level for the pond. If, it, if the skimmer is mounted too high, your water level will be too high and it could potentially run up and over out of the pond, all that. If it's set too low, then your water level will never come up high enough and it will look like the pond always needs more water. So it's real important that we mount these skimmers um, right where we want them the first time. So we're gonna do some more measurements, some more shots with our transit and our level over here. Make sure we got all of our grade shots exactly where we want it. And we're gonna put this thing down into place. So one of the ways that we um, decide where our water level is gonna be is we want our water level when this face plate is on, it's gonna take up some of this, spot, this space right here. When this face plate is on, we want water level to come up to about three quarters to an inch below the top of the skimmer mouth. And that usually means this bolt right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot for water level and we're gonna dig this down and bury this skimmer right where about where this bolt is right here. And um, that way our water level will come up to it and then we can start building the rest of the pond around it. All right, so in the pond world, we use bulkheads for any kind of penetration that we make through liner, in this case, our skimmer, our biofilters, and a bulkhead allows us to put threads in so we can put a fitting on there, and then we make a watertight penetration. So in this case, this is our skimmer, we're getting ready to mount up our skimmer, and a bulkhead is gonna come with two gaskets. One's gonna be like this rubber little washer right here, and then one's a rigid hard plastic. And in this case, the rubber gasket always goes on water side. So kind of one way that we do our training is rubber on water. So this is gonna be where the water's at inside of our skimmer. So we want our rubber to go right there and then our hard rigid plastic piece right there. And that just kind of gives us something good to let this nut settle on. And then um, the nuts on, on bulkheads are always reverse thread. So this one's gonna go lefty tidy. And then we get that nice and hand tight and then we'll take our big channel locks and then we'll give it about a half turn to make sure we're nice and snug. You don't want to over tighten these bulkheads because if you over tighten it, you'll squeeze that rubber washer out from around this bulkhead and it can cause a leak. So we just want it nice and snug on there. And then this one we've already got on here and we're going to give that a nice little snug there too. And then in this case, our pump is going to attach on this side and then we're going to have our PVC that runs and attaches to this. And this side right here is going to not be used. So Aquascape gives us a cap and we want to we use a silicone. put a, some of our RTV silicone on there and that's gonna go right here. Now we want it on the inside of this skimmer because if we put it on the back side and we have it buried and we ever do wanna use this, it makes for a lot bigger pain to get into this, this uh, get access to it. So we'll put that on there, get our channel locks. We're going to tighten that in nice and snug. And I always like to run my finger around there and just 
get that seal nice and closed up. Probably doesn't do anything, but makes me feel better about it. So now that one's done, ready to go. That's watertight. And then we'll get ready for our fitting for our PVC to glue to. And we're gonna do the same thing around here. Just a nice little bead. I think this is done. Now we're ready. Once this is buried in, we can attach and glue our PVC in and then run it around to our biofilter. So the first thing we want to do when mounting up the skimmers, we want to make sure that our underliner is way out of the way because if it gets wrapped up in the install here, we can, um, it'll cause a leak because it'll start wicking and it won't allow us to get a good seal. So we always wanna make sure we tuck our underlayment nice out of the way so we're not fighting with it whenever we do it. Another thing that we wanna look for when we're getting ready to set up our mount our skimmers, we wanna have plenty of liner on the back sides, but we also wanna have a good fold down here in the bottom, plenty of slack because once this fills full of water, we don't want that tension to pull on our seam or, or anything like that and have to stretch against it. So we want to have lots of slack down here at the bottom. And then we want to make sure that whenever it's pressed up nice and tight that we don't have any wrinkles or anything in the way. So this right here is perfect. This is the face plate that mounts onto this. So we'll put that aside for a second. And this is the actual um, thing that we mount it to. So this is the Signature Series 1000 skimmer, and it um, it mounts up a little bit different. And the reason it does that is because it has this adjustable face plate on it. So if we wanted to lower the water level, we could set it a little bit lower. If we want to raise the water level, we could set it a little bit higher. But we always install them based off the highest point. So um, really that kind of free fall. This does come in pieces. Um, comes apart in pieces, but installs together. So the first thing that we do is this is the top and we know it's the top because this is our door. So when it, opens, when it flows in, water comes this way. So we know that this is the top. And the very first thing that we do is we take these little um, threaded liner pokers, I guess. Um, those screw into the top here. I'll just gives us those to help make this installation a lot easier. So we're good here. Now we will pull our liner back and then we'll set this in through here. So there. So now everything sits real nice and tight. Want we'll to make sure we don't have any good dirt or anything too messy right there on it. And then we're gonna double check our liner and make sure that we have enough slack and we don't have any crazy wrinkles because once we push our liner through those probes, um, through the probes, that's it. That's where it's going to stay. So I just tuck that back in. So this goes in here. And then that's when we use our silicone and we're gonna put a bead of silicone all over these here. So big healthy bead silicone over all the bolts.
vehicles out. And I kind of use that silicone to help kind of glue that in place. So there we go. Nice and I don't really I don't really push it in and squeeze it out too much just yet. I'm gonna let the bolts do that for us. And then so the thin side, even though it sounds crazy, the thin side actually goes in the bottom. So the big thick part stays up top. That goes there. And now we are ready to start installing our brass bolts. So that's going to go right there, and then I usually take my screwdriver and twist it in, break that liner. So we don't ever use power tools on this because if you over crank it or over torque it, it can uh, crack the faceplate and then you're not going to be able to finish what you're trying to do because you have to go track down a new faceplate. Another reason we don't use power tools is if you're going too fast and you start to um, start to spin those bolts too quick, what it can do is it can grab that liner and actually twist that and bind that liner up and you won't know you did it because it's behind that faceplate, but you'll find out the next day after the pond's leaking. And once all those are in there, we can take those back out, pair of pliers, and unscrew these and replace them with. There we go. Now this is ready to be cut out with a box blade. And we got everything mounted in here. Take our knife. Cut very carefully. Now we're good there. There's that, and this goes up and down if we need to adjust it. And then it gives us these little bolts here that we can go from the other side and tighten it down to hold this in place to get that optimal level that we want. So, right there, and then we're gonna take our 7 16 wrench and just give everything a good snug, just like you do on a car, we wanna go in a variable pattern so we get that squeeze out just right on our silicone. Do not want to over tighten it because you can break that plastic stuff. Good to go. Now we're gonna start rocking it in and we'll put some of our boulders in that will kind of set back and, and cap, kind of frame in this side and frame in this edge and kind of really hide the skimmer so all of our leaves and water will run through here. Cool. All right, so we're getting ready to install our skimmer here. And uh, this is the Signature Series 1000 skimmer and it comes with Bunch of cool things that we um, we use all the time here. So the very first thing that goes in is this. This is the um, rack to hold your filter. And that goes in very first. 
sits down there in the bottom so that our green mat can um, can go in and have something to sit on and be supported and get positioned here. Okay. So the very first thing that we're going to do is get our check valve kit. This is what we use to hold the water inside the biofilter when the pump is turned off. So without this, when you turn your pump off, all the water from your filter is going to rush back into the pond, dry out the filter, and in turn, kill your beneficial bacteria. So this has a check valve in it, a flap. When the water goes up this way, it opens that flap. When the water's turned off, the pressure of the water coming back through closes that flap and holds all the water inside the line. So we take this, make sure that this collar stays on and it screws in to the side where you installed your PVC. And that will just kind of go in hand tight. Some dirt in there. So that's, that's good there. And then the bottom end is threaded and is designed specifically for the aqua surge pumps. So that will thread on like this. This also makes for changing out your pump whenever it's time a lot easier too. So we put that in, we angle it back a little bit. And I'll show you why here in just a second. Take out all our cords. When our filter goes in, right underneath that, and then you can see it marries up perfectly to that. So if you ever need to pull your pump out, service it, clean it, do whatever, it makes it very, very easy to do. So we're all tied in, that screws in, and now our pump is down there in the bottom, and we protect the pump for small particles and anything that gets through our skimmer basket with this Matella green filter right here. And this is again, specifically designed to be used with this skimmer and it fits in here perfect. So the first thing we do is take our cord, run it through this. And then I found that the easiest way to get it on there is to set, take the, front, the nose in first, set it down real nice. In there so this filter pad gets cleaned out as often as needed i usually tell people about every other time that you clean out your skimmer basket which is this right here so inside the box you'll have the handle that just pops in there it makes for removing this easy and then our cord comes out and will be ran through this little indention right here. And our skimmer basket has these little receivers for this. So this will go in and set in just like that, nice and tight. And then you can open the door to your skimmer and everything that comes in. So the basket's gonna catch all your big leaves and large debris. Anything that gets past that's gonna get caught inside of the uh, Matella filter pad.